Welcome to Tomorrow Never Knows with me, Bob Wilson, and Sir Warren Brown of the Beatles Kingdom. Our guest tonight is Dr. Kit O'Toole, and she's here to discuss Howie Fox and the launch of Lemon Records. Beatles Magazine is a publication with 370 plus million visitors and all their pages read by thousands of fans around the world every day. Beatles News is updated daily, 24 hours, audio, video, photos, interviews, contests, additional materials, and more. Follow Beatles Magazine, the most complete online coverage, 24 hours a day. And how many days a week, you wacky kids? Eight days. Eight. Days a, a week. week. Welcome to our special guest, Dr. Kit O'Toole. Welcome, Kit. Welcome, Kit. <laughs> Did we lose it? Thank you so much. Always I glad to be here with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like a better offer came up or something. <laughs> right. We got, <laughs> we got a little delay in in the video and audio, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's a little delay for some reason. Mm. And as usual, we have to announce our disclaimer. All right, Howie Fox, who we're here to promote, is a political animal. He could live in the political zoo. He's such a political animal. But we're actually here for one thing and one thing only, and that's to benefit Bob and Warren. And we're not worried about politics. We don't want to offend anybody unless it brings, it brings us more ratings. So if Howie comes out and offends you, he's going to offend across lines, across party lines. Howie offends on the right, Howie offends on the left. He offends on the left, he offends on the right. So if he comes on and you find yourself offended, he's going to get the other guys later anyway. But if you really do get excited about it, you just write, write to Warren Brown and tell him you never should have had him on in the first place. Because maybe we shouldn't have, but we're going to give it a shot because you never know. You know, because the Beatles started Apple Records and, you know, they got James Taylor and people, so you never know what's going to happen. So we're out here, we're, you know, letting one loose in the wind, as they say. We don't know how it'll blow back on us, but we're going to give it a shot anyway in these heightened political times during a pandemic. There's nothing better during the heightened pandemic than an attempt at some humor. So, Kid, are you still there or did you flee? <laughs> I think she ran. <laughs> if she was smart, she would have ran. She was with the band on the running, running straight the heck out of here. Out John Fogarty went out the back door and she went out right after him, I understand. <laughs> You know, Kit, you're our not historian. Afraid, not Kit. afraid at all. You're our Beatle historian, <laughs> Dr. Kit. Did you know that? She's the queen of all I guess I people. am. You're our Beatle historian <laughs> here. So we have to ask you, tell us about how the Beatles started Apple Records and what happened at its launching. It sounds like a boat. We're launching it. What happened when the Beatles started Apple Records? <laughs> Well, Apple Records was, it was really um, a twofold uh, kind of project for them. Uh, quite frankly, first of all, it was for tax purposes. Um, you know, after Brian Epstein died um, unexpectedly, um, you know, they had to find a way to, you know, to structure their money, you know, quite frankly, and they developed this business. But the other thing they wanted to do was, to find a way to first of all have more control you know over their creative output and they wanted to develop other artists you know they wanted to recruit talent um and so that's when they created apple records um and 
they did cre- um, recruit some incredible talents. Um, you know, they, uh, of course, Mary Hopkin, James Taylor, Modern Jazz Quartet, they were already a name, but they managed to get them on the label. Badfinger, um, you know, number of artists that uh, that we know now. They managed to spin off into um, other things like fashion with uh, the Apple Boutique. Um, they even created a sub-label called Zapple, which was more avant-garde kind of stuff. John and Yoko uh, put out a number of albums on that label, and George did too with Electronic Sound. Um, and so, you know, they created this kind of empire uh, for themselves starting in 1968. Um, and uh, as we all know, you know, that there were some great things that came out of Apple. Um, and, uh, you know, then uh, financially it, uh, you know, didn't, uh, didn't do always as well. But some great bands came out of it. Um, great music, great art came out of that experiment plus of course the Beatles came out with their own music on that label and uh you know Hey Jude came out on that label many many uh, uh great great uh later albums uh that they produced so while it may not have been a huge financial success in the very end it was a wonderful experiment that produced great art great music Now, you mentioned James Taylor. Was he the first guy that they signed to Apple Records? You know, I'm not sure. I don't think he was the very first, but he was definitely one of the early talents. And that was through um, actually a a mutual friend, uh, um, uh, Danny Kochmar. He was a mutual friend of um, James's and Peter Asher. And uh, Danny was in a band with James Taylor in the late 60s uh, called The Flying Machine. And uh, they recorded one album, which you can actually find now. Uh, it's, it's on a tiny label. Uh, they recorded this album, which never how's, got released how, at how the time. Tiny is the label? It's on a tiny it's, label, like an itty bitty tiny. label? <laughs> it's tiny. It's a itty bitty label, yeah. And I guess from what I remember, James was not thrilled when it was. Does it come with a magnifying glass? But it, when John looked at the, uh, <laughs> when he climbed the ladder and it said yes, does the tiny label have a magnifying glass? Yeah, exactly. Glass? There you go. <laughs> it's, it's probably that kind of a label. Exactly. That's that's true, Bob. And uh, but at the time, you know, never released. So uh, James went to England, and uh, Danny, as I said, knew Peter Asher somehow. They, I think they had mutual friends in common, and said to Peter, you know, you really ought to check this friend of mine out. You know, he's, he's really a great talent. So somehow a, a demo tape that James made got to Peter Asher, and Peter heard it called up, you know, contacted James and said, I want you to come and, you know, let's talk. James played in person for him. You know, brought his guitar, played in person, and what are the ways Peter did Asher he, said, did I, play, I remember. Did, did he ever play not in person? And so, well, I I don't, I mean, I guess what happened was that Peter Asher heard this this t- demo tape first. And, uh, and then, you know, when he heard about, you know, he heard the tape, called it, it him James. It was just a bad said, joke. You know, was, come on over. Like, how can oh. you play if it's not in person? <laughs> like, what do you know? You send somebody That's else true. in your place or something? Just yeah, ignore me and keep going on with your ass. I can edit that out. <laughs> no, I'll leave it in. It was so bad it was good. <laughs> That's what we feed on here in the I camp. got you now. There I got you, go. you now. All right. So, uh, so anyway, so... <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Bob. Got slow on the pickup. So anyway, you know where uh, I so live James now. James came over. Yeah, I know where you live. That's right. So, <laughs> so James came over, started playing for Peter Asher, and I remember reading an interview where Peter said he immediately thought, "Oh my gosh, you know, this is a rare talent. You know, this guy is a superstar." And you know, that was it. He instantly said. I'm signing you now. 
And uh, and strangely, the album that you know he did record for Apple, which Peter produced, wasn't a big hit. Um, obviously, then he left. Went uh, uh, James did went back to New York. Peter followed him uh, and became his manager and producer. And then, of course, we know what happened after that. He did become a huge star. Um, but uh, but yes, uh, you know James certainly did get his big break, his first break through Apple Records. Well, that was a terrible segue by me. Your answer was fantastic, but I was trying to set up <laughs> our first signing for Lemon Records and Entertainment, and our first signing. Do you want to guess who it is? Our first signing is a political comedian, hearkening back a couple of decades who makes people laugh with his written word and his spoken word. Do you know who we mean, kid? It'd be very funny if you didn't at this point. But who? Do you know our first signing? Gosh. I'm trying to think who it is. Play the uh, music. Could it his be last... Howie Fox? There you Howie go. Fox. Howie Fox. Fox. It's Red's cousin. You know, he's Red Fox's cousin. <laughs> yeah. No way. He used to have bit parts on Sanford and Son. He used to come on with John Barber. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, he was he was like the first before Grady took over and got his part. He was gonna be a Grady character on Sanford and Son with his cousin Fox. <laughs> and Warren using Warren using all of his powers of persuasion and a pen. Got him to sign with Lemon Records. Can you believe it's in this exciting? Well, and w while James may not have been the, you know, the, the very first signing, I mean, he was certainly one of the earliest. And so Howie <laughs> may be the next James Taylor in that sense that he may be your first superstar. You so, you know, so how he will be your breakout star. I just know it. And that's what brought you on today, wasn't it? You wanted to be part of the Howie excitement. Exactly. It's I have known Howie, oh, gosh, for at least, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to think, I mean, at least four years. I, I met him. Um, at the Beatles Fest in Westchester, uh, but I'd been Facebook friends with him before that, but we met in person then. He is the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet, and he's hysterical. Uh, he is just such a, a fun guy. And so when you guys told me that he is your first uh, artist with Lemon. I was absolutely happy to come on and and uh, sort of like to tie it in with my Michael Jackson book. I feel like Diana Ross introducing the Jackson Five. <laughs> well, you know, I, I always feel great. like Diana Ross when I wear something frilly and I sing around my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> okay, Bob, that's more know? about you than I wanted to know, but you know. <laughs> Did you know that when Ringo Starr first came to the Beatles and they were going to do a world tour, Ringo got tonsillitis. Did you know that, Dr. Kid O'Toole? I think you performed the tonsillitis, yes. even though you were too young to yes. have done that. But for the show's purposes, you performed Ringo's no, yeah. tonsillectomy. But do you know who went on the road and traveled across North America with the Beatles as their drummer? as it was being reported by Ivor Davis and Art Schreiber, it was Howie Fox. Why, that would be Jimmy Nichol. Oh! <laughs> no, no, no. Howie Fox. I did Howie also Fox. before some free Jimmy Nichol. Wow, and, now that I did not know. And that was the start of <gasps> Howie Mania. Not That's Beatle right. Mania, uh, Howie right. Mania. When Howie went so, to so Australia, do you know that through. there were 100,000 people lining the streets and kangaroos they just <laughs> were playing didgeroos all because howie made them so crazy because of his charisma, <laughs> humor and star appeal did you know that dr kid O'Toole, who performed howie's time well selection? now see well now see i i guess i have to lose my my status as beatles historian because i i did not know that so uh -huh. you know i guess i've i've lost I've lost the title. <laughs> did, you uh, lost the title, but did you save the tonsils? 
<laughs> if we put those up on eBay, you know, we could yeah. just find some tonsils. Think we could of, say I, they're I Ringo's. We could sell them. Wow, we could we we could clone Howie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that's your, well, no cloning. But, we, but I think that would be a great idea. We could get tonsils because once they take them out, they never use them again. And we could give them a good home saying that they're Ringo's tonsils. There you I go. Think, there you this go. Would, this would be a good deal. So, <laughs> Warren Brown, you're there. Are you designing any of your wonderful graphic art around Howie or any of our lemon? products or any of our lemon you know entertainment logos or such i know in the beatles we have these psychedelic things they're really wild and colorful and they stretch you know they stretch like the colors stretch are you designing yeah. any of that for howie uh, i sure am and uh i'm using our new record label um a design that i made and it's a picture of a lemon with john's glasses on and it's called John Lemon. Now can we put that on t shirts and hats and maybe buttons? We sure can. See that? <laughs> so this is like getting very, very exciting. Dr. Kit, would you like to have a lemon t shirt? I would love that. And this is very uh appropriate that you're launching this right now because you know in time for summer Yellow is such a great color for summer. Um, it oh. is, you know, it's the in color uh, for summer. You, I mean, it's bright. Uh, it's just perfect for it. the summer months. Give me some design uh, ideas, Kit. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, you could go into, I mean, definitely shirts. I mean, maybe, you know, some more, you know, even some feminine, more feminine designs for, for us girls. Um, you know, you could even branch it to some dresses, maybe some jewelry. I mean, there, you could, there's endless ways you could go with this. I, I do make all that stuff too. So awesome. <laughs> I know you, I mean, I, I know you are very creative. Seriously. You're very creative. So I know you <laughs> can do you. stuff. I we'll know have you a, can. We'll have a little Howie mania line. I like it. I like it. I think it would be fabulous. And that would be great. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. how his work when he started? Do you remember Peter Sellers? Oh. And he was and he worked with Howie on the Goon Show that John oh. loved so much. Classic. Did you like that show, Kit? Absolutely. I mean, who could forget his work with Peter Sellers? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, classic. And do you remember when Peter Sellers came down during the Let It Be sessions with Howie and oh. they visited the Beatles in the studio <laughs> and they sang that impromptu version of the two of us? Oh, I mean, you know, and that's that's part of the bootlegs. Maybe that'll end up on the box set that's coming in the fall. <laughs> that would true. really be something. But, you know, I hate to say it, but it wasn't a John, George, Paul or Ringo song, song that got me. My favorite song of the Let It Be sessions was Peter Sellers and Howie doing their version of the two of us. And then they did those pratfalls doing it. I think it was better than the movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that'll come out in the bonus footage, you know? I mean, uh, uh, and uh, as I said, when the, when the you know, Peter Jackson's movie comes out. So, I mean, we can, all, we can only hope, right? Right. Well, anything, Howie, we just hope those lost tidbits, you know, come to the surface because they should yeah. be lost. So, Warren, what is the going to be the logo? Like they had the Apple for Apple Records. Describe some of the ideas you have for the logo for this new entertainment line. Well, um, just I was going to have a half lemon, you know, look like a record, record uh, label. Uh Put oh, Howie's, okay. put Howie's name on there. Um, well, putting Howie's name <laughs> on there is cheating because anything with Howie's name is just gonna take over no matter what it is. You can just we're gonna have it. we're gonna have it. Howie everything, Bob. Wow, it, it's gonna be Howie mania. I'm telling you, 
it's going to be another version of Beatlemania, but this is going to be bigger and better than Beatlemania ever was. My well, goodness. I think we should shut the expectations a bit higher. We're going to have we're going to we have give little dolls, to inflatable dolls. What? Uh, we're going to have little <laughs> Howie Howie dolls. You know, Howie like dolls, the, like the little beetle bobbleheads and all that. Well, we're going to have Howie dolls and Howie bobbleheads and. <laughs> I want an inflatable I love it. Howie. I think an inflatable <laughs> Howie would be pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> and that would go good. I love it. Kit, can you tell us, I think the Beatles appeared on the Johnny Carson show. Like two of the Beatles, John yes. and Paul, appeared on there. And the host yeah. was really Joe Garagiola, who yes. was perfect for them in their psychedelic <laughs> period. It was a really, like when you put two perfect puzzle pieces together, it was Joe Garagiola with the psychedelic Beatles. Oh, what yeah. What was going on in that interview? Do you have any memories of that show? <laughs> well, when you, I mean, i you know, I, I'm fa I'm trying to remember if they actually seriously if there is any you know real footage from it um, because I've seen the stills from it, but yeah, I mean I've seen the uh, you know I've read the accounts of it and all, and let's just say it's about as awkward as you think it is. I mean it it is really it, there there couldn't have been anyone more um, inappropriate to <laughs> to listen to them i mean you know here are paul and john talking about you know what a great experiment this is going to be and how beautiful this is and joe's just looking at them like he doesn't know what the heck they're babbling on about i mean it's it it, it was just so like just you know you you couldn't have found people who were so different and and i mean it was it was just awkward beyond belief <laughs> and uh, i know that feeling every time we come on here without a script yeah, exactly. yeah. and it how he's going like to be that. watching it how he's going to be watching this and say what did i get myself into <laughs> well, the funniest thing is that how he's not here <laughs> i think that but, speaks volumes you will get to see him at the end of the show doing some of his uh, comedy stuff. So uh, please, everybody, stay tuned for that. Now, and, Kit. And really, and, oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Oh no, no, I was it's going so to say. It's so unlike me. No, <laughs> I was. I was just going to say seriously that uh, you know Howie is is really funny. He has been writing jokes. For many many years, he has sold jokes to um, to comedians. He has oh, uh, written buy them. And so, right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. Who else can, you know, he uh, sold well, jokes to podiatrists. Yeah, right. Well, you know, you, you, when you need comic relief, you need it. And, uh, and you know, uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, written columns for newspapers. I mean, this is a guy who's been in the business uh, for, you know, a while. He's been doing these comedy, uh, uh, like these kind of, well, he started uh, recently doing these short comedy shows once a week on Facebook. And so now you're going to get to see him do his thing on this channel. And so, you know, you, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, you know, as I said, he's, he's been doing this for quite a while. And, uh, and he's, he's got a following. And so now you guys get to see what he's been doing for a long time on Facebook. And, well, that's quite uh, a step. Dr. Yeah, Dr. it's a it's quite a step up, and uh, and he deserves it. He's really, uh, you know, you're really going to get some laughs from this guy. He's uh, how he is is just uh, he's he's really funny. Now, now, Warren, excuse me for for coughing. Warren won't brag about it. He won't talk about it. But we all we all know that you know Klaus Borman had a helper designing the revolver cover, and that was Warren Brown. Could you talk about the influence Warren Brown had on Klaus Foreman designing the revolver cover? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, Wouldn't that's... have been the same without Warren's influence on Klaus. I, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, 
I mean, it, obviously, I mean, Warren's too shy to, to talk about it. He's too modest. And, and Klaus, <laughs> you know, Klaus doesn't, I mean, he's, when you, he's a nice guy and all, but he's, when you talk to him, I mean, he's, he's a little shy himself. So he, he doesn't like to, to go on about it, but I think we all know the obvious influences there. <laughs> I think it's a shame that on the Sergeant Pepper cover, do you remember some of the people on the Sergeant Pepper cover were removed because they wanted like money to have their picture on there? I think it was like Leo Garcia of the Bowery Boys and Hitler. You know, I'm sure he'd want to do it now, especially after that joke. But <laughs> Ken Mansfield was the head of Apple Records USA. And he, for some reason, is deigned to come on our show. I was wondering, do you guys think that if we ask him nicely, Ken Mansfield might become head of Lemon Records and Entertainment USA? Hey, you never know. You know, I mean, he's he would be... A wonderful, he'd be a, you know, he'd do a great job, and hey, you know, maybe then you can, you know, stage your own rooftop concert, yeah, you know, you, you can get, I mean, come on, and I'm also waiting for you guys to announce your own offshoot of Zapple, I mean, you, you. Zemon, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was actually Kit's idea, so Kit, go on more in length about that, that was a weird project, <laughs> Spoken you know, words and bizarre ideas. Please tell exactly. the audience more about our our version of Zap. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you need you need a, an offshoot of Zemon. Yep. Well, you need. Yeah, just. We're just, thinking of calling it Nipple. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. We can call it. Lem we could have a big concert, and it could be called Lemonade. Ah. <laughs> and <a> <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. See, I mean, I I really think this this project is going to go places. I really do. <laughs> I I like it. We you know that was the best idea Bob has ever had <laughs> that I ever heard in my life. <laughs> do you know, I think it's pretty incredible. The one thing Howie doesn't even like to mention because he's sort of modest too, was that every time somebody does a rubber chicken joke. In either North or South Korea, where Howie went on tour and entertained the troops on both sides, that he, <laughs> he gets, I think it's 15 cents or a quarter every time somebody in the Koreas does a rubber chicken joke. Doesn't that warm your cockles, <laughs> Oh, my God. Imagine if I did smoke pot. I don't. But, I mean, people <laughs> before the sure. show, but imagine if I did, but I actually don't. But what do you think of Howie, Howie and the Rubber Chicken? Yeah, there you go. Uh, the famous Rubber Chicken Dance. Remember with the video back in the day when he did the Rubber Chicken Dance? Oh. I mean, that was pure Howie. With, I think now with this resurgence of Howie's yeah. comeback, I think it's just really, really just too exciting for words. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yep. yep. <laughs> he makes fun of both sides of the aisle. Yes. But do you think he's really deranged, or that he has Trump derangement syndrome? Which side of the aisle do you think how he actually falls on? Because I know everybody today loves Donald Trump. I mean, you just say the guy's name, and it's like you just you know everyone's so happy and warm. <laughs> no, real. Trump. You know, yeah, seriously. <laughs> He, you know, that that's the thing about him, that, that he really is, you know, uh, he, he really doesn't, you know, take sides. And, and he loves to laugh at himself, too. You know, he real that's that's the great part about him, that that he really is. I mean, he he will make fun of everything, but he also makes fun of himself. And uh, and that's part of you know, his, his great humor. So, and, you know, and that's, that's the best part. I mean, you got to laugh at yourself too. And, and so I credit for it, but you know, I'm interrupting you because that's my trademark, but it was, <laughs> you know, he's actually the person and he won't say if you voted for him or not, but he's actually the person who got Trump to start tweeting. No. <laughs> Yo. Well, you know, oh. maybe who knows? <laughs> They were out at Mar del Lago. Yeah. And, they, and he said, Donald. And Donald said, What? 
because that's what Donald says when you say his name. And right. he said, Donald, he said, what? He said, do you know what I think would make you a really well-known political candidate and get you a lot of attention? And he said, well, I know how, if what? And he said, tweet. And ever since then, <laughs> we've been getting this stream of tweets straight from the nipple of Howie. <laughs> Oh, he's the one boy. who got Trump tweeting. <laughs> oh man, he's he's a man of many talents. He, and he, you know what else? He, he, I'm sorry. Continue, please. Tell us about how his talents. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he, he is he is a he is a man of many talents. Yes, he is definitely the king of one-liners. Uh, he, he really is. I mean, he can fire them off in two seconds. I mean, you know, about anything. You know. But, um, but do you know what? Do you remember his Love Boat episode appearance? Oh! When he patched up Gavin McLeod's marriage with his ex-wife when they were coming on the show, and when they docked, they were going to get a Mexican quickie divorce, and how yep. he got them back together, and I thought that was just the most heartwarming love boat there ever was. Yep, and he got it him was together with just, to do. Yep, and he got him together with just one of his one-liners. You know, wow. that's all it took. Well, this yeah. guy, this that's guy is, this guy has been everywhere. He's been uh, on all kinds of comedy shows. He he was uh, had interviews on SNL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, late for a night, second, I thought you said S and M. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of interviews were these? We're actually in there. Hey, he was a writer <laughs> performer. <laughs> how he's, I think we'd get more ratings. You know, <laughs> it talks about how he's S and M. He was a On writer. The label. Yeah, he was a writer performer in the comedy group The Laugh Factory. Uh, in New Jersey, and they no longer use child labor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. He also reviewed. <laughs> he also reviews Beetle bootlegs. Uh, known, he's known on the internet as Beetle Bob. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay. He's, a <laughs> he's a Yankees fan. He loves lemonade. Oh, and, that's true. so he's perfect for this channel. Exactly. If Paul had the veggie line with Linda. We could have maybe we could sell lemonade. There you go. We could make it like chic. You know what? Do you, how do you say it? She or chic? I'm, I'm very ignorant. Which one is it? It's like if you know when rich people pay too much for something, like you sell them orange juice, but you give it another name, like orange wop freeze, and then they mm. pay like nine dollars for a glass. I think we should sell Howie Lemonade. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Be perfect. Uh, his favorite quote is, how did you find America? Turn left at Greenland. He said that. <laughs> the days before the guidance system. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's he must, be, he must be a Beatle fan. Oh, major. A Beatle fan, fan you major. say. Yeah. Well, he yeah. played... He played it like it was really him and not Jimmy Nickel, right? Get wink, wink. That's, that's right. That's right. And you got to respect a man who has, an, and every time I see him at, at the New York Fest, he always has a yellow dog T-shirt on. Now, anybody who knows that bootleg label, I mean, when I first saw him wearing that, I'm like, okay, this guy is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Did did you ever get to hear his album, uh, The Yellow Lemon? Instead no, I have that. not heard that. Oh, I bet yeah. it rocks. I think he knocked it off from the Beatles, The uh, Yellow Submarine. Oh, I, oh, really? I, I, yeah, just, it's man. got, it's got a picture of lemon and it's got four little holes on it, and each one of his eyes are sticking out the hole. and and then it's going under the water uh, across the uh, the cover of the album. <laughs> that was one of his most popular albums. Wow, I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, this 
this guy has done everything. Yes, as I said, he's a man of many talents. Yes, he is. <laughs> but speaking of being of many talents, Dr. Kit. Yes. Kit, the reason you're putting up with us tonight and our tomfoolery. Tell us about your many talents. But on a serious note, I respect your work so much, and I love your podcast, Talk More Talk, and I've read your books, and that's why we love having you on. Tell us about your books, your articles, your podcasts, your appearances. Oh. I mean, and that appear in that time last week when you were on The Simpsons, I just happened to tune into that. I didn't know that they wrote <laughs> an episode when Bart became a Beatlemania. Oh, I, I, I can't believe they're still running that episode. You know, I, I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> you put Krusty the Clown to shame. You're yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well, I am the author of these two books right here. Uh, this one is Songs We Were Singing, Guided Tours Through the Beatles', Beatles Lesser Known Tracks, which is about uh, the songs that were not the big hits. Um, these are the songs that are album tracks, B-sides, um, you know, stuff that really, I think, are over um, unfairly overlooked. You know, you don't hear them that much on the radio. And so these are songs that I talk about from the time that they were written until, you know, the recording. And I talk about why they matter. Um, and uh, a lot of people have told me that they listen to the songs as they're reading about them, which I love. So I definitely recommend that. And I don't know if you can really see it here, but uh, the uh, one of the comments here on the cover is written by Ivor Davis, your friend and mine. Uh, he really wrote a nice blurb on the on the front cover here. So, um, but uh, anyway, so that's that book. And then this you one, know, Ivor is, is a very sexy man. He is. I mean, you know, I I really uh, <laughs> I was so lucky to have such a sexy man, you know, writing uh, about my book. <laughs> and, You're the queen of playing along. You really deserve it. <laughs> Modern ask you to make you a cup or a T-shirt. Putting oh, up with there me. you go. There you go. And then this one is Michael Jackson FAQ, All That's Left to Know About the King of Pop, which is all about Michael Jackson's career. It's not a biography. It's it's strictly about his music, his art, his dance from the Jackson Five uh, up until his death. And uh, and it is like everything you wanted to know about who influenced him, how he developed his dance, all the, the hits and the lesser known stuff. Um, and uh, it took a long time to research this and, uh, and it was fun to do. Um, so those are, those are available on Amazon. Um, I also uh, co-host a podcast um, called Talk More Talk, uh, which is about the Beatles' solo years. And I co-host that with people I think many on this channel will be familiar with, uh, Tom Hanyati. Ken Michaels and Mean Mr. Mayo is a great Beatles channel of his own. And uh, we host that every other Monday on Facebook Live. And then uh, the episodes go up on our YouTube channel and on um, our podcast. Uh, we're, they're available on pretty much any podcasting platform you can think of. And we, uh, we just talk about every aspect of the solo careers, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, when we air it live, we want people to join in the conversation. And Bob, you've, you've joined in many times. Two of my favorite shows that you guys did were yeah. actually focused on Ringo. And I loved yep. the one on Ogner Rats last night. And yes. I guys discuss the Rango album. Don't be so oh, yep, check us out. Um and I also write um articles uh, for uh, the site Something Else Reviews, I write a Beatles column called Deep Beatles, and for uh, Blinded by Sound, I write a soul column for them. So uh, you can check me out there, um, and I have a website, uh, kiddotool.com, and you can find me on Facebook uh, where I post whenever I have a new article up or any new um, you know appearances on other people's podcasts or channels like this one. Uh, I'll certainly be promoting this. Um, you, you, know, you can check me out there and find out what I'm up to. So I think that's everything. Please, everyone, yeah. vis visit Kids Pages and watch her podcast. Uh, they call her the queen of all things Beatles, and she certainly is. Oh, royalty. And speaking <laughs> of royalty, you got your crown from a lovely lady named Betty, and how is she doing tonight? 
<laughs> she's doing much better. Thank you. Yeah, she uh, had a had a rough uh, rough couple of months health wise, and and it was pretty tough because it was at the same time as the coronavirus um, stuff is going on. This was not coronavirus related, um, but she's doing much much better. And and uh, you know, thanks to you guys and so many other friends who you know. Uh, really uh, send us a lot of good thoughts and prayers and and she's uh, you know finally uh, you know making progress and is and is feeling a lot better so thank you so much for asking great well, we to so hear she was yeah. feeling better than it was yeah the most important thing but yeah. um that was you know it uh because nothing's important as your mom but, yep um, that's you know, you're, she raised a sport because you came on and put up with this and you helped us launch Lemon. So, I mean, you did her, like, uh, you deserve great accolades for putting up with this hour. Okay? <laughs> on it was fun. Along. It was it's fun. hard to find somebody of your caliber who's willing to come on and put up with this chicanery. So, we thank you so much. You're very welcome. It was a lot of fun, and it's an honor to uh, help launch your, your, new, uh, your new channel and, and your new project. And clothing line. Uh, and clothing and, line. <laughs> Howie Mania. I'm uh, telling you and guys. And Howie Mania. Yep, I'm, <laughs> I'm honored to, to introduce, uh, help introduce the addition of a, of a you know, and a good friend too. Howie is, right. is a great guy and he's going to be a, a great, great addition to uh, to your new channel. Well, hey, do you want to sing? Oh, Lauren's got something. I was going to say, yeah. let's sing the end at the end. Because we um, already closed yeah. We can do that. Just a minute. Uh, everybody can find Howie Fox uh, on Facebook. Um, his page is called Com Comical Week in Review. And uh, you'll see him once a week here on Tomorrow Never Knows podcast. All right. I'll sing the beginning. Kid will sing the middle. And you'll finish it off, Sir Warren. Uh, we can do that. Got it. It's a little weird that we launched Howie without Howie. It's kind of like having <laughs> Martin Rose, like Warren Green isn't there. We had a we had a, one of them little roasts, you know, where everybody was standing around toasting Howie, yeah. and he and he wasn't even here. Yeah, really. <laughs> and Looking you know what forward. I was wondering? We it's kid is looks like it's a movie set behind her, and it's like a door, and I can't yeah. Believe. Howie was going to walk in, and it's me. <laughs> I wish. That would be funny. Well, or Joel was saying behind that locked door or something. Yeah. Hey, Kit, I, uh, I see you moved to uh, your right a little bit, because the last time we spoke to you, you were right underneath of that plant. Yeah. yeah and I it looked yeah. like you were wearing that for a hat. I know. I decided to move partially because of that and partially because the lighting's better over here. So I decided to try switching positions. And yeah, I think the lighting's better. And yeah, it doesn't look like I'm wearing a hat. Although mm. I do love hats. Mm. And that's another thing you should make for your there merchandise, you. hats. Well, we there can have the go. kit lemon line of hats. I like that. I like right. that. Yeah, I like hats. So there you go. We can, we're even going to have lemon cars. Oh, very and nice. It's going to be printed across the side, Howie Fox. Ah, oh, fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous. Well, Howie, we gave it our best shot. I think we all had too much lemon juice. Yeah, I think so. Fermented lemon juice. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. So you ready to sing the end? Let's do it. One and a two. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love we make and how we make. Turn uh, me on, Harry Fox. Turn me on, Harry Fox. <laughs> <laughs> That was good, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kit. You're beyond the sport. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, that thank was you funny. so much, Kit. I appreciate it. And we'll make sure Warren.
Hi, this is Howie gaining weight during the lockdown fox, reminding everyone that carbs are not your best friend. I'd like to congratulate my daughter. She just finished her junior year at college. Now all she wants to do is party like it's 2019. And I feel bad for her now. Now when she wants to go out and drink, she has to log on to Zoom. And she's very anxious about going back next semester. I hope so. I mean, I never sacrificed so much by giving up my man cave just so she could have a bedroom. And since there's nowhere to go, she doesn't use up my car's gas, which is great. Not only have I saved by switching to Geico, but also COVID-19 has saved me even more. And a year from now, she'll finally graduate from college. Hooray! Like all grads, if all goes well, she'll work at Starbucks just to pay for student loans. But I'm proud of her. Not once during college has she asked me for money. That's because she knows her mom will say yes. And one thing I, I admire about her is her ability to sleep late. I mean, ah, college kids. I mean, she could sleep through a nuclear blast. You know, this is why I kind of wish I got married when I was young. I could have farted under the blanket and my wife wouldn't scream at me. Anyhow, that's today's monologue. I hope you had a good time. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye. Hi, this is Howie dying for some good sushi fox, reminding everybody that today is Cinco de Mayo, what Americans refer to as the Mexican St. Patrick's Day. And due to the coronavirus, this will be the first Cinco de Mayo that you won't need galoshes just to walk outside of a bar. <laughs> but I want to tell you, for last year's Cinco de Mayo, I went to celebrate in the bar in New Jersey. Everybody was so drunk. When Chris Christie showed up, they started hitting him with a stick after somebody yelled, Pinata! My wife, she's not much of a drinker, but offer her chips and salsa and it's a different story. And after a few drinks, we'll want to make slow love. In fact, at our age, it's so slow, we forget what we were doing. And with all the social distancing, people are now resorting to using sex dolls. I have no luck. I once bought a female sex doll. When I blew her up, she refused to reciprocate. And this morning, I went out to buy a six pack of Dos Equis to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. And the man behind the counter says to me, you are the most interesting man in the world. Yeah, right. You know, with that bottle of Lysol spray sitting on his counter, I could just imagine what he would have done if I would have bought Coronas. Anyhow, that's my monologue for today. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Everybody stay well, stay healthy. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, this is Howie doing his third week of videos, Fox, reminding everybody to be kind to strangers unless they're not wearing a mask. Well, the bad news is the Kentucky Derby has been pushed back until September. The good news is it gives everybody a chance to learn the words to my old Kentucky home. You know, more than anything else, I'm missing sports, especially poker. Poker on ESPN. Yep, where else can you watch a player break a sweat just for bluffing? And Major League Baseball, they're attempting a comeback this June I mean, really, how are the players going to stay safe with everybody patting each other's butts? And what about a bench clearing? Are they going to throw punches from six feet apart? Geez, at this point, it won't matter if they threw a spitball. And I have to admit, after being home for two months, I found one sport that I'm excelling at, one that I can do all by myself. Beer pong! Except I skip the table, cups, and ping pong ball part and go straight to the beer. I mean, why waste all that time? And during this downtime at home, I'm doing my best to stay in shape. Right now, I can bench press 16 Apex of Charmin and use the Stairmaster with an N95 mask, all without an asthma attack. Oh, you should see what I could do with a squatty potty. And my wife. My wife, she's been working out, and I'm proud of her. Right now, she can lift a drawer full of takeout menus three times a day. And that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody stay well, stay healthy. Bye.